Apple. Glass. Driver, do you mind helping him? Thank you very much indeed. Oh, no, do be careful. The, the, the bottles of medicine. Thank you very much. You're going to take them all yourself? Eventually. Going to be busy, ain't you? I've been ordered a long rest. 15 River Street, Chelsea. Do you mind opening the door? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for helping. Keep the train. Uh, uh, careful, big glass. Oh, thanks, Gov. Bit different from the fair before you. You know, he hopped out at the traffic lights and scarpered without pain. Regular shady nook, he was. Shady nook? Yeah, shady nook. Crook. Get it? Now, look, Gov, you want to be careful. London's full of them. Be careful. Glass from the Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. I just paid a lot of money to have these medicines made up. We don't want any accidents. Certainly not, sir. There was a phone call for you, sir, from the nursing home. The room is ready and the car's on its way. And Nurse Brooks is coming with it, sir, to see you don't cut your chin. I feel sorry for you, sir. I know these old battle axes. She'll only put your feet in a mustard bath. I suppose you really have to go to the nursing home, sir. What do you mean, Twig? Well, sir. Your appetite's good and you look well enough. I should think a nice weekend in Paris. That's quite enough. I beg your pardon, sir. I think we can safely leave the question of my health to Dr. Wyatt. He says I have an acute apprehension complex. Yes, sir, no doubt, sir. I'm to have complete rest and relaxation. Very necessary, I'm sure. No exertion and certainly no excitement. Will you be taking all this lot with you? I trust you have no objection. Oh, no, sir. Craig, it's time for my yeast tablet. Yes, sir. Once, sir. Linked us the lotions and the sleeping pills, vitamins and the antibiotics, the... Yes, and the gargle. Yes, tablets. Thank you. Craig, where did this come from? It was in the cab, sir, along with all the rest of the stuff. Doesn't belong to me. Thought I'd never seen it before. Oh, well, someone must have left it in the taxi. Oh, no, no, don't, don't, don't. It doesn't belong to us. Maybe a name and address on the inside. Perhaps you're right. Fivers. <laughs> Thousands of them. Must have been a bank robbery. Three. <coughs> Got it. <coughs> the taxi driver said the fare before us looked like a <coughs> looked like a crook. Well, that's it. He was a crook. And in the process of getting away, he, <coughs> he left his swag behind. <coughs> Call the police. You mean you're gonna give all this lot back, sir? Uh, naturally. All of it? <coughs> Dial Whitehall 1212. Once. <coughs> oh, answer the bell. That'll be the car from the nursing home. Hello, matey. Not expecting visitors? After you, Algernon. What is the meaning of this? And don't get the idea it isn't loaded if you value your health. Over there beside him, if you don't mind. You, 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 you'll be held to account for this. Have you got a license? Where is it? Come on, hand it over. I, I don't know what you're talking about. No. The briefcase, what I left in the taxi. I know you've got it. I followed the cab. Come on, don't tempt me too much. But, uh, how do I know it's legally your property? I got no time to tell you the story of my life. Are you going to give it to me, or am I going to give it to you? No, oh, hand it over, Twig. There it is. Call it, please. I wouldn't if I were you. No, no, no. Why on earth did you let him in? You know perfectly well I'm not allowed to have any shots. I'm not going into that nursing home a moment too soon. Now, Twig, I'll call the police and you go to the door and see if he's there. Me? Yes, go on, open it. Go on, Twig. Oh, 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 oh,
both do something, Twig. What, sir? Well, anything. But call the police. Somebody's taking all that money. take to get here. What does that matter? Time's of no importance to the victim of a murder? No, oh, look here, I'm in no condition to cope with all this. I'm under the care of my doctor. I, I'm just about to go into a nursing home. You see, well, you must forgive me, Mr. Selwyn. You look fit enough. Well, I suppose so, to your unqualified eye. Quite. Well, having removed the body, Mr. Selwyn, perhaps you'd be good enough to show us where you put it. In the study. All right, Willis. Right. We'll try not to bother you about this more than we can help. No, oh, actually, I'm not supposed to have any worry at all. Is he some little trouble with the nerves? I have an acute apprehension complex. Hmm. The imagination a little oversensitive, perhaps. Shall we say overcreative? By all means. No sign of a body, sir. What? It's gone. What? He evidently went out by the French window. That is, if he was ever there. This is incredible. Are you suggesting I've been making all this up? Tweed will tell you he helped me in with him. Besides, he just held us up with a revolver and taken the briefcase full of five-pound notes. That's right, isn't it, Tweed? Now, look here, Mr. Selwyn. Take my advice and forget all about it. I've no doubt it all took place exactly as you said. But the man didn't stay dead. The fortune of fibers vanished into thin air. We've had no report of any big robbery, so if nobody else is worrying about it, why should you? Come along, Willis. Right, sir. Aspirin, Twig. Aspirin! Mrs. Logan. Thank you. Where's the boss, Mrs. Logan? Sure. How come you let Harry double cross you? We slipped out of the corner traffic jam and hopped into a taxi. We got him, though, proper. Killed him? Oh, no. Well, I don't think so, Mrs. Logan. I hope not for your sake. You know my husband's views on murder. Yes, ma'am. Don't flatten him, my dear. I think we can forget about Harry. In any case, I always disliked the idea of taking him to the Mediterranean. It was clever of you to trace him and get it back. It's perfect. Just like the real thing. Poor old Joe certainly knew his job. Sad to think of him down there on Dartmoor. <laughs> Ten long years. Bad luck, wasn't it? Still, as long as we've got the plates, we can always print fresh editions. As long as we've got the plates. Where are the plates? Search me. I'll search you, all right. Twig. Sir? What's this tin marked hypodermic syringes? I, I didn't buy them. Ah, oh, I took that out of the pocket of our vanished corpse while I was looking for the gun. Yes, but they're not. I mean, they're just bits of copper. Is that so, sir? What about the dyspepsia lozenges, sir? Ah, oh, I meant to say they're cooking in these places. 
I quite forgot. Yes, you might go to the chemist on the corner and see if you can... Oh, here we go. The old battle axe, the nurse with the hearse. Uh... Nurse Brooks. Uh... Ah. Good morning. Uh, how do you do? Uh, well, won't you sit down? Let me get you something. Well, shouldn't it be the other way around? You're the patient. Uh, I'm not quite helpless, you know. I can well believe it, Mr. Selwyn. In fact, I've seen sicklier specimens in a soccer team. I, uh... I suppose you've heard all about my case from Dr. Wyatt. Only that you're coming to us for observation. Ah, yes, he wanted to spare you the details. Didn't want to harrow you. I'm supposed to have absolute quiet, uh, regular meals and lots of rest. You don't look as though you've been overdoing it. Acute apprehension complex, you know. Acute. Really? No shocks, none at all. A uh, twig, um, start getting those things out. Uh, careful, glass, remember. Nurse, well, come sit down. I can't tell you how I'm longing to get away from here. We've just had the most terrible experience. You see, it all started by me finding 200,000 pounds worth of fibers in a taxi. You counted them? Well, no, there wasn't time, really. Now, a chap came in here with a gun, claimed the money and took it away. A gun? Yes, huge great revolver, fully loaded, threatened to kill me. Then he got outside and somebody killed him in broad daylight. Tell me, Mr. Selwyn, does it happen at night as well? Well, it's the first time it's ever happened to me. I see. So Dr. Wyatt doesn't know about it? Oh, no, how could he? He's still on holiday. It has only happened today. Oh. Yes, go on. Well, uh, then we, uh, we, 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 we put the corpse in here and rang Scotland Yard. Then a, a chap called uh, Archer came along with a sergeant. They went in to see the body, but it had gone. Of course, they didn't believe a word. What about the money? Completely vanished, like the corpse. Extraordinary, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. A little unusual, perhaps. Uh. I wouldn't waste time thinking about it. Is this the gun? By Jove, yes. But be careful, nurse. Bad luck, Twig. Things aren't always what they appear. No, now you don't believe me. Of course I do. If only bodies would stay where they're put. No more shocks, Mr. Selwyn. I'm going to look after you. Well, I think it's time we were going. Come along, come along. We're keeping you out of bed. Well, I don't really want to. So you realize if we don't get back the plates, then we can't get out of the country. Yes, but why can't we just take the stuff we've already printed? Because when that's gone, we're finished. We can't come back here. After we worked Europe, it'll have to be South America, and there we'll have to stay, living on what? But there's a tiny bundle of it there in the case. Worth about a fiftieth of its face value after everybody has been paid for circulating it. I know Joe's been inside for ten years, but isn't there somebody else who can fix his no, up with the plates? No, there isn't. Joe's plates were perfect. If we used any others, we'd be pinched before we'd clean up enough to get away. And I don't fancy spending the rest of my life in a Spanish jail. There's just two places where those plates could be. Either Addy took them out of the briefcase and put them in his pocket, or they were taken by the top when he found the case in the taxi. One of them's got those plates, Harry or the top. I suppose it never occurred to you to search Harry after you'd knocked him cold. No. Uh, well, you see, boss, uh, we didn't have time. It I never mean, occurred to you. All right, there's no use moaning. We've got to get the plates back. And remember, both of you, our future's tied up in this. If we stay here, we'll be broke and we'll be arrested in time. Sooner or later, the police will track the phony stuff back to us and then we'll soon be with poor old Joe on Dartmoor. You should close your eyes and relax completely. Mm. What a heavenly sword. <laughs> His pulse is a little rapid, Matron. Quite, quite comfortable, Mr. Selwyn? Oh, yes, yes, it's, it's quite wonderful here. Uh, well, we do our best. I was afraid you might find it a little austere. No, no, on the contrary, I assure you. Uh, Dr. Wyatt rather gave me the impression that you were a little spoilt by good fortune. <laughs> I never want to go back. Oh, uh, you will when you're cured. Well, I don't want to be cured. Oh, 
Oh, come, come, Mr. Selwyn. You mustn't despair. You're not as ill as all that. Nurse Brooks will soon be sending you about your business. Oh, nurse, I don't think I should let him take all those. And just what Dr. Wyatt prescribed. Very good, Matron. Good night, Mr. Selwyn. Good night, Matron. Selwyn, why did you bring this? Oh, I don't know. Twig must have put it in with the rest of the stuff. Do you know what's in it? Well, of course, a couple of bits of copper. Do you know what they're for? Well, I haven't the least idea. Would you like them? Have them by all means. <laughs> yes. They are yours. Good oh, Lord, no. No, Twig found them in the corpse's pocket. The corpse which disappeared? Yes, that one. You're quite sure? Why, well, yes. I mean, Twig wouldn't lie about a thing like that. Twig, he's been with you for some time, hasn't he? Yeah, ages. Just he was my batman. We were blown up together when the troop ship was mined. Oh, I'd absolutely vouch for Twig. I mean, if, if Twig said he'd found that tin in the corpse's pocket, well, he jolly well did find the tin in the corpse's pocket. Of course he did. Hmm. And I don't think any more about it. It's not important. Good old Twig. Works like a slave. You was dead. Fancy that. Where's his nibs? The master's not at home. Perhaps you'd like to call again some other time. Hi, hi. So you did go through me pockets. Larceny in high places. This is a real one, matey. I think you'd better take my word for it. Careful now. There's some valuable bits of china around here. We don't want nothing smashed. <laughs> Where is it? Where's what? Well, if it's all that dough in the briefcase, we haven't got it. Whoever slushed you got that. It's not that I'm worrying about. It's a little tin box. Labelled hypodermic syringes? Yeah. What you took out of my pocket. Where is it? Two little bits of copper plate in it. Never mind about that. Hand it over. Well, it was here somewhere. All right, find it. Come on, get moving. Well, it was here. I saw it myself. I tell you, I saw him go in. Well, it was here and now it ain't, so you can do what you like about it. It must be somewhere. Look here, matey, my old future's wrapped up in that little tin box. I risked my life to get it. Can't you get to other bits of copper plate? Matey, you don't understand. There's them as it kill me now to get hold of that little tin box. It's worth a fortune. Please try to find it. Perhaps the governor took it with him. Took it where? In the nursing home. He had a ton of medical junk with him. Perhaps another nurse picked it up absent-minded like. That's it, I'll bet you. How'll we get it off of him? Half a mile. There's a letter here from his doctor. From the nursing home. Has a name and address on it. Here you are. Read it for yourself. Now, this is the address of the nursing home what Mr. Selwyn's in, isn't it? That's right. Say, matey, can I have this letter? It's all there, ain't it? Phone number and all. Sorry I had to pull the rough stuff, matey. It ain't my line of business at all. Actually, I'm in the printing trade. Indeed. Only my partner's had to go away to Dartmoor for a few years. Very bracing climate, I believe. Oh, oh well, well, so long, lady. I'll pay your governor a little visit.
again. What, do you know him? Know him? I can't get rid of him. Where's the phone? Silly. Ambulance, quick. 15 River Street. Chapel's pretty bad. When do you come into this? Do you want me to begin at the beginning? Yeah. You're not going to believe this, but there was a ring at the door, and I thought it was a nurse. A nurse? Yeah, but it wasn't a nurse. It was him, with a dirty big gun. It's clear to me that this bird who's gone into the nursing home has taken the plates with him. If they'd been in the house, Harry would have found them. As it is, we've got Harry and this. And where does that get us? Quite a distance, if we use our wits. I'll handle this job myself. Go and get the car. Right, Gav. Oh, thank God. We'll be off until tomorrow morning's time. I hope you're right. It's in the bag. I wish they hadn't left Harry on that doorstep. They could have dumped him in the river. It would have been neater and safer. Now what's been going on here? Look, Sam, don't make Where's the constable who reported an injured man? He's gone off in the ambulance with a corpse. I wish I was with him. I could do with a bit of a rest. Play the fool with me a little more and you'll get a long rest. Where's your boss? He ain't here. I can see that. Where is he? In the nursing home. Which nursing home? There's more than one, you know. I don't know. Oh, yes, you do. Don't give me that. It was written down in a letter from Dr. Wyatt. Address, phone number and all. Excellent. Let's see it. What I'm telling you, I can't. And why not? I gave it to the corpse. You'd better be very careful. Very careful indeed. Willis, sir, ring the hospital. Get the constable who's with that injured man. Yes, sir. Tell him to find a letter from Dr. Wyatt to Mr. Selwyn. Yes, sir. Perhaps you can tell me where to find Dr. Wyatt. No, sir. You can't or you won't? He's away on holiday. I only wish I was with him, too. Well, never mind about that. I intend to find out a lot more about your boss and you, too. All right, I'll tell the inspector. Man's still unconscious, sir. Constable White has searched his effects and there's no letter. No letter? No, sir. Two large bumps on the head, sir, and no letter. Hmm. The moment you hear from your boss, let me know. Look, Gov. There's a car just like ours. And there are thousands of others. That's why I bought it. Yes? Uh, good morning, Matron. I'm Dr. Logan. Oh. A colleague of Dr. Wyatt. Oh, good morning, Doctor. <laughs> I've come to see one of his patients, Mr. Murray Selwyn. Uh, didn't Dr. Wyatt mention it? Uh, no. Oh. Oh, dear. What a pity. Well, uh, it must have slipped his memory. <laughs> well, we won't let that discourage us. <laughs> Where is Mr. Selwyn? Oh, dear. What a pity Dr. Wyatt didn't tell me. He's still uh, uh, coming his way, Doctor. And uh, Nurse Brooks, uh, this is Dr. Logan. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Nurse. Dr. Logan is a colleague of Dr. Wyatt's. Uh, good of you to come, Doctor. Well, I'll leave you and Mr. Selwyn together. Thank you, Mitchell. Uh, Dr. Wyatt and I have decided to make a psychological approach to this case, Nurse. Oh, that sounds very interesting. I'm sure I shall enjoy that. I don't expect you'll be needing me for a while, Mr. Selwyn. She's a very clever nurse, you know, Doctor. I'm, I'm starting to feel better already. Yes, I can quite believe that. Lift your head. I don't like this at all. Well, what's the matter? You're hiding something, aren't you? No, I don't think so. By Jove, you're right. It, it's all to do with a briefcase full of five-pound notes. Tell me everything, right from the beginning. Well, it all started uh, when I got back in a taxi from the chemist shop.
You didn't half give me a turn. I was looking for the songbird. Nothing better to do, I suppose. Who's your boss, doctor? Doctor. Specialist. <laughs> I'm a bit of a specialist myself. Go on with you. Hello. But when the corpse vanished and the police obviously didn't believe a word, I, I started to feel worse. I wonder you didn't have a complete collapse in your condition. Well, I have Nurse Brooks to thank for that. She seems to give me strength. How fortunate. You say the police didn't believe you? Almost to the point of being facetious. Oh, that's why I'm not going to tell them about the other thing. What other thing? I won't bore you with that. Doesn't mean a thing to you anyway. But if I am to treat you, then I must know all the details. You're quite sure about that. I'd hate to make a mistake. When will Dr. White be back? I see. Thank you. Goodbye. Of course, it never occurred to me for a moment to look for the tin box. I mean to say, oh, who would? Yes, yes, go on. Well, I didn't know then what was in it. Mr. Selwyn, what was in it? You must tell me, I insist. Well, when I realized the police weren't interested, I was prepared to forget the whole thing. I couldn't care less what happens to that tin box. That is not the right attitude. You say that this box labeled hypodermic stringers might cause untold damage. You can't leave it at that. What was in that box? We will never guess. We know it's broke. It shook us. You mustn't tie yourself, Mr. Selwyn. Well, Mr. Selwyn, what was in the box? They looked like copper plates for printing phony five-pound notes. That's just what I wanted to know. Mrs. Ridley. Mrs. Ridley. <laughs> Hypothermic. <laughs> Morning, Doctor. Uh, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> Hello, Nurse. Here you've got a new case. Rich young fool to me since he's ill, eh? What a wax case. <laughs> You'll soon put him in his place. And I want to see Matron. What on earth for? You've forgotten to take your memory powder again this morning, Doctor. Isn't it dreadful? I can't remember a thing. You know, I'll be taking an appendix out one of these days and leaving me forceps behind. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Logan. The tin box is gone, Nurse Brooks. Really? Somebody must have taken it. Wouldn't that be a good thing? I'm sure we don't want it. Do you want it, Dr. Logan? Yes, I think the police should have it at once. Oh, nuts to the police. That is the attitude of an unbalanced mind. How do you expect to get well if you've no sense of moral values? And surely you realize the seriousness of his position. He, he might be arrested for aiding and abetting a, a gang of forgers. The, the shock would kill him. The box must be found. If you're really worried, Doctor, I'll phone the police now. That is the last thing I want you to do. Besides, Mr. Selwyn's excited enough as it is. Besides, without the box, they discredit the entire story just as they did before. Look, nurse. It's important for your patient's sake that the box is found. Now think, who could possibly have moved it? Anyone could have come in during the night. Mr. Selwyn might have walked in his sleep and taken it. I think the best thing will be for me to try and find it and hand it over to the police. That's fine, but don't hand it to the police. Let me do that, then Mr. Selwyn uh, won't be worried. I can see, nurse, you're forming your own opinions of what to do with the copper plates. In that respect, you're exceeding your duties as a nurse. Well, that's all right with me. But not with me. I should like a word with you outside, nurse. I'd like that, too. Shut the door, nurse. Surely you realize that patient is a schizophrenic? Split mind, twin personalities, one of them criminally dangerous. I only realize that you are not a doctor. Oh, smart girl. You've been checking up. Well, now that you know some of it, you better know the rest. Detective Inspector Lotion. Banknote forgery has been going on on a huge scale from these plates. They're perfect. The only type in existence. We've got the man who engraved them and he's serving a sentence. But if, if these plates are at liberty... Oh, but you don't think that Mr. Selwyn... We can't rule out anyone. 
You hit them, didn't you? How do I know that you and Mr. Selman aren't in this forgery again together? Oh, but we're not. You'd better get them and give them to me. Bring them out to the car. Yes, I will. They're upstairs. Bye-bye, matron. See you later. Oh, Dr. Grice, <laughs> your hat. Uh, oh, thanks very much. Forget me head next. <laughs> I think he'll survive. Survive? But he isn't ill, is he? Schizophrenia. Oh. Goodbye, Mitch. How can it have gone? Where did you put it? In a drawer. Someone must have taken it. But there aren't any other clocks. I mean, nobody knew. Think, nurse, think. I know. Dr. Grice. Who's he? He's terribly absent-minded. He's probably put it in his pocket. Where can we find Dr. Grice? He always goes from here to Mrs. Ridley. It isn't far. Come on, show me. There, gone. Somebody's pinched our car. What? I suppose Dr. Grice has taken that as well. After you, nurse Brooks. Get going. That tin from Dr. Black. Here, God. Look. Wait. This is it. Thank Well, I'll try and find her for you. Now, off to bed with you at once. Not <laughs> until I find out if she and Dr. Logan have found those plates. Plates? They're yeah, for printing phony five-pound notes. Well, I bought them with me. <laughs> well, I do hope you don't intend to print any here. <laughs> Dr. Logan has gone, but we'll take that up with him next time he calls, shall we? Uh, but there's quite a long story attached yes, to this. I'm sure there is. Now, look, I want you to go to bed immediately, and I'll send Nurse Brooks to you. Yeah, but there's something going on, and I intend to find out what it is. The trouble is nobody will believe me, not even the police. Now, there's an inspector at Scotland Yard. Mr. Selwyn, will you kindly go back to your bed immediately, or shall I have to find somebody to put you there? I'm not going back to bed. There's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with me! <laughs> Nurse Brooks! Nurse Brooks! Why, Mr. Selwyn? I'm cured. I'm perfectly well. I knew the whole thing was psychological. What are you doing out of bed? I told you to go back to bed at once. Oh, speak to him, Doctor. Perhaps you can reason with him. Well, he's not a patient of mine, but he looks all right to me. Oh, I am glad, Doctor. Now, about those plates, you found them? Yes, we found them. The police have got them. Oh, splendid. Now, I haven't got anything to worry about. Where's the telephone? <laughs> he's raving mad. Something about printing five-pound notes. I suggest you leave it to Nurse Brooks. Well, as long as he doesn't get violent. I'll bet I could prescribe for that young man. I bet she could, too. <laughs> Why didn't you ring me before? What do you mean you haven't got the number? It's in the letter from Dr. Watt on the desk. Well, I haven't got the letter, sir. It ain't here anymore. Then what on earth have you done with it? Well, I gave it to the corpse. Well, he wasn't the corpse when I'd done it. What's that, sir? I said, have you been drinking? Hmm? Which sounds uncommonly like it to me. Is that so, sir? Well, I ain't. I've been bullied, badgered and bewildered by the flying squad. And to let them know as soon as they hear from you. I think you're wanted for murder. Oh, really? Is anything the matter? No, no, no. Yes! Unwanted for murder. Come on. 
Make it three, my puppet. Even Kane deserves one today. Does that mean you got them? Uh, not without a little trouble. Dr. Logan. <laughs> <laughs> Detective Inspector Logan. <laughs> How those fools fell for it. I mean, you can get away before we're arrested. On the next tide, and I can't say I'm sorry. Things are getting rather warm ashore. You always wear a bright boy. Still, I'm rather reluctant to say goodbye to that pretty little nurse. She was very nice, wasn't she, Kate? Oh, very tasty indeed, Gus. Well? I was only kidding. You should know that. Maybe. Well, we've gone through enough to get those plates. What about having a look at them? Help yourself. The way we fooled a lot of them. You have to laugh. Maestro. <laughs> well, Dr. Logan. <laughs> Inspector Logan. <laughs> Ken. We've been double-crossed. The taxi's on its way, Mr. Selwyn. Thank you, Nurse Brooks. <laughs> Haven't you forgotten something? Mm hmm? Oh, those. <laughs> The waste paper basket, if you don't mind. Mine? I'm delighted. Yours must be the most miraculous recovery we've ever had. Thanks entirely to you. Nonsense. You didn't really believe in my illness, did you? Afraid not. You think I invented the whole thing just to escape from something? Well, didn't you? Perhaps so. I was very glad to come here, but I'm delighted to go. Oh. You must have been very bored. Goodbye, Mr. Selwyn. I'll be seeing you, Nurse Brooks. Nurse Brooks. Yes, Matron. Come here, please. Goodness gracious me, girl. What's the matter with you? Nothing, Matron. Why haven't you got your things on? You've got an outside job. Didn't you know? Have I, Matron? Mr. Selwyn insisted on your going with him. Didn't he tell you? You'd better hurry up. Oh, yes, Matron. Yes, sir, begging your pardon, you're liable to be pinched. Oh, that's all right. Nurse Brooks and I'll see to that. Yes, sir. You won't take any chances, will you, sir? I mean, catch a chill or anything. Shall I get your hot milks? Oh, don't be silly, Twig. Go and get the luggage. Yes, sir. Then ring Carstairs Court. Yes, sir. And uh, book an apartment for Nurse Brooks. Yes, sir. The best they have. Yes, sir. Then make some coffee. Yes, sir. Nurse Brooks, my pulse. Certainly, Mr. Selwyn. My goodness. It's racing. I thought so. We must do something about it. We're going to. Now. I love to hear you talk. Go on, tell me some more. Why are you so interested in Nurse Brooks? Oh, I'm not interested in Nurse Brooks. I just like to hear everything that goes on, that's all. I'm a student of human nature. You say Nurse Brooks and this Selwyn chap left here together tonight? Well, it's all over the places he's fallen for her. Well, let her out of his sight. Well, where have they gone? Bet you don't know. Nosy, aren't you? Back to his place, I expect. Want to be alone. Twig, go and get a taxi. I can phone for one, sir. Oh, go and get one. The walk will do you good. What, sir? Ah, yes, sir. I wonder how you're going to enjoy nursing only one patient for the rest of your life. I expect I'll learn to make the best of it. Hmm. What a wonderful feeling it is not to have a single worry in the world. I hope it all works out that way. Well, of course it will. Why shouldn't it? I'll call the police in the morning. Just a formality, of course. Although Inspector Logan will have handed over the plates and everything will be cleared up. <laughs> you are a darling. <coughs> Taxi's waiting, sir. You've been very quick. It was just down the road, sir. Waiting. Oh. Joe, uh, 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 plate, uh, 
Joe. You've been talking again, sir. Huh? Keeps repeating the word plates. Could mean anything from his dentures to his feet. Hmm. Keeps on referring to Joe and the Moor. Plates, Joe the Moor. Moor. Othello, Shakespeare. More like Dartmoor, sir. Hmm. All right, start from there, but where do Joe and plates come in? Bit of a jigsaw, isn't it, sir? Hmm. How many Joes in Dartmoor? Well, that's something we can find out. Don't pretend to be surprised, you're not. You and your boyfriend tried to jump into this racket. You jumped a bit too far. You're going to write a note to Mr. Murray Selwyn and I'm going to hand it to him. And unless he gives me the plates, he's never going to see you again. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. just a minute, I'll make a note of that. Pasquale, naturalized, metal engraver, ten years. What? Uh, when you searched his place, did you find the lot? What's that? Everything but the plates. I should say it does help. Thanks very much, Ricky. Yes, I'll do the same for you one day. Willis. Ah. Here's your little jigsaw. Joe Pasquale is serving ten years on the moor for engraving plates for phony notes. Our bird in hospital's tied up on that job. Perhaps he's got the plates. Why, sir, are they missing? They are. But I'm going to find them if I have to use dynamite. Come on. What do you know of Joe Pasquale? Who? Joe Pasquale. Who's he? What do you know about him? No. You've been talking a lot about plates. Plates? Plates? Uh... Whoever beat you up was looking for something. What was it? Plates, wasn't it? <sighs> Copper plates? For fibers? That's right. Plates. Joe's plates. What was your job? Printing? That's right. Printing. High class work, very, very high class. Now we're getting somewhere. Now tell me this. Why have you been hanging round Mr. Selwyn's house in Chelsea? Because... Because he's the one what's got the plates. Oh no, Willis, isn't that something? Oh, chase me. I want to see Mr. Murray Selwyn. Don't you ever go home. The boss is just going to bed. Won't tomorrow do? Kindly ask him if he'll see me. Oh, well, if you put it like that. I do put it like that. It's all right, Twig. You can go. I'd like him to stay. It's all right, Twig. You can stay. Now, uh, what can I do for you? Your health seems to be remarkably improved, Mr. Selwyn. I'm feeling as fit as a fiddle, Inspector. And if that satisfies the official anxiety about my health, I'd like to go to bed. Have a drink. Uh, no, thank you. We'd all like to go to bed, sir. Unfortunately, Willis. We've been hearing quite a lot about Joe Pasquale. Really? And how am I supposed to react to that? Come now, Mr. Selwyn. We all like to hear about absent friends. I've never heard of Joe Pasquale. No? That's odd, isn't it, Willis? Very odd indeed, sir. Perhaps he's more your friend than Mr. Selwyn's, eh? What's he do? Sell ice cream? No, he is an artist in his own particular line. What is his line? Banknote forgery on a big scale. His associate, a man named Harry, has been calling here. He's been knocked unconscious twice on these premises. He's in hospital now, Mr. Selwyn, and he is just beginning to talk. Well, what about it? He's made a certain allegation against you. Well? When this man Pasquale was about to be arrested, he handed over two engraved copper plates and a large quantity of forged five-pound notes. This man, Harry, hid them until... Until what? Someone made a big enough offer. Someone has. But all Harry got was a bump on the head. Now, I wonder who that someone could have been. <laughs> there you are. Fair enough. I think you'll produce the goods now. You're incredibly dense. He can't hand over what he hasn't got. I don't believe it. He hasn't so much the worse for you. You're assuming Mr. Selwyn to be as big a crook as yourself. Nobody double-crosses me twice. She might be telling the truth at that. Not a chance. He's got the plates and he'll cough up fast enough once he knows that I've got his girl. Anyway, that's my hunch. All right, play it your own way. Lock it up, Kate. <laughs> well, tell us about it. We'd like to laugh, too. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. You evidently suspect me. Well, I didn't say so. You think I had something to do with those plates? You're quite right. I took them to the nursing home with me. Ah, go on. I didn't know it at the time. Oh, no, 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 of course not. 
Oh, if you're going to doubt every word I say, oh, I'll shut no, up. Don't do that, sir. We're interested. Oh, splendid. Sit down, Inspector. You know, you chaps have already got the plates. What's that? Yeah, they were handed to Inspector Logan at the nursing home. Inspector who? Oh, well, Dr. Logan. He's an inspector, really. Go on. Well, actually, I, I wasn't there when he got them. He'd lost his car, and when he got it back, well, there they were. There who were? Well, the plates in a tin in the cubby hole. It's funny, isn't it? OK, let's get this straight. You say these plates were handed to a police officer named Logan? Of uh, Scotland Yard. There is no such person. Oh, don't be ridiculous. He attended me in the nursing home. Only I didn't know he wasn't a doctor. <sighs> you try and straighten it out, Willis. You're quite sure, sir, that all this really happened? <laughs> I mean, I get some pretty realistic dreams myself sometimes. Look, I'm not asking you to believe me. This Logan's a crook, if you ask me. Nobody's asking you. Shut up. Oh, all right. So the plates are now in the hands of this nebulous character named Logan. Is that your story? Yes, it is. And he's not so nebulous. Inquire at the nursing home. Lots of people saw him. I'll do that, all right. Don't worry. What I want to know is, who handed him the plates? Well, I've already told you. They're in the cubby hole. If you were in bed, how do you know all this? Nurse Brooks. Nurse who? Brooks. Oh, is she? Uh, at the nursing home? No, no, no. Carstairs Court. <sighs> She's got an apartment there. You're sure of this? I, I mean, this isn't just another of your imaginary characters. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know what to think of the kind of statements you make. To date, not one of them can be substantiated. It's my opinion you're trying to obstruct us for some reason best known to yourself. If so, you're for it. Now, let's get this straight. Is there, or is there not, a Nurse Brooks? Well, of course there is. I can vouch for that because they Shut up! Come on. We'll go and see her. What, this time of night? You're crazy. Am I? I'm not the only one. What was the name again? Brooks? Yes, that's what I said. <coughs> We've called to see a Miss Brooks. Miss Brooks? Yeah. Well, just say it's Mr. Murray Selwyn. There's no Miss Brooks here. Uh, that's absurd. I know she's here. I don't care what you know. I know she ain't. She's got an apartment here. Check up and see. Reception's closed till morning. Come back then. Well, that's nonsense. That's all right. I'm quite satisfied. Another false alarm. You know, you're heading for trouble. Hello, Selwyn. Feeling better? What about those plates? Exactly what I was about to ask you. I don't know who you are, Logan, but I do know you went off with those plates. Now the police think I've got them. It's not good enough. I agree with the police for once. You and your pretty little nurse have framed me nicely. In what way? You know. I do not. First you're a doctor, then you're a detective. What the blazes are you, Mr. Logan? Someone who dislikes being double-crossed. Here's a love letter for you, from your girlfriend. You dirty rat! Sit down. I see. Now, get this. If I don't get those plates, you're not going to see that girl again, ever. I'm going away, and she's going with me. I tell you, I haven't got them. Not good enough, Selwyn. You've got to believe me. They've gone. I don't know where they are. Is that likely? You and Harry are in this game together. He's going to do your printing, and you're going to organize the planting of the stuff. It sticks out a mile. You're wrong. You've got the whole thing completely cockeyed. If you haven't got them, you'll know where they are. I'll tell you something, Logan. If you've laid a hand on that girl, I'll tear you to bits. I'll send a man in four hours' time. If you don't hand him those plates, your nurse Brooks has had it. And I'm not bluffing. Hello. Hello. Well, speak.
speak up. I can't hear you. Uh, I, I said, is that Mr. Murray Selwyn? <laughs> the, this is Dr. Grice. I know. <laughs> G-R-I-C-E. -G -E. <laughs> uh, do you happen to have Nurse Brooks anywhere handy? I don't know where she is, but she's been kidnapped. <laughs> if I didn't know something about your case, I'd really think she had been kidnapped. <laughs> well, oh, never mind. No, 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 another time will do. You what? No, no, wait a minute. That chap Logan's a crook. No, he's mixed up with a gang of forgers. He's kidnapped Nurse Brooks. No, something must be done. Oh, all in well, dear. <laughs> Take a sleeping draught, Mr. Selwyn. <laughs> Uh, get me Scotland Yard, Whitehall 1234. Hmm? I said 1212. Twig! Twig, where the blazes are you? Blast a silly ape. Hello? Who? Oh, yes, put him on. Nurse Selwyn, what is it now? Nurse Brooks is what? I don't believe a word of it. But I tell you, that chap Logan's just been here and held me up with a gun. Oh, go and get your head examined. Willis! Do anything you like, but for heaven's sake, protect me from that maniac Selwyn. She's in the river. What? I'm gonna bring King off. Come on, go. To information. Yes, they radio the nearest launch. Okay. Goodbye. Station. I'm going there now. So there's a Dr. Grice on the phone. It's about Nurse Brooks. He says he can explain everything. Well, tell him to meet us at Mortex Station. Come along, Willis. Dr. Grice? Hi, what do you want? It's my bet that Selwyn will get the plates from Harry and hand them over. And if you don't get them, don't bother to come back. What about the girl? Well, she knows too much anyway. She'll have to come with us. Part of the way. If you draw back the Selwyn, beat him up. Sergeant. Name? Nicholas Kane. Name? Tommy Pierce. Right, this way. Name? Estelle Logan. Name? Philip Logan. Name? Horace Twig. Horace Twig. Name? Murray Selwyn. Murray Selwyn. 
Well, well, well. Mr. Selwyn again. We'd like to hear you talk your way out of this. Wouldn't we, Willis? Oh, I think Nurse Brooks will do that for him. Hmm? <laughs> you must have given Inspector Logan the wrong tin, my dear. I must have picked that up by mistake. <laughs> I'm a bit absent-minded, you know. <laughs> it's Scotland Yard. The page. Yes. Now, if you ask me... Shut up. Come on. Now, Mr. Selwyn, try again. It's your last chance. What, here? Now? All right, Willis, get these birds under lock and key. Right, sir. All right, get moving. Tell me all about it. Hmm. From the beginning? From the very beginning. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's only fainted. I'll soon bring him round.